All right, today, guys, we're going to be learning about circuit simplification. We're going to continue our Boolean algebra with learning De Morgan's theorems. All right, so there's two of De Morgan's theorems, and the two theorems both involve pretty much the same thing. You got that inversion bar across the top, or we usually say it not, and we're going to learn how to break that and change it into two individual ones. Basically, you break the line, you change the sign, okay? And it works for both the AND and the OR symbols, okay? On this page, we're going to learn a little bit more about Augustus de Morgan. I'm going to read it in what I think his voice sounds like. My name is Augustus de Morgan. I'm an Englishman born in India in 1806. I was instrumental in the advancement of mathematics and am best known for the logic theorems that bear my name. Nailed it. So as we talked about before, we talked about the fact that if we have a solid bar across two of these variables with an operation in the middle, when we break that bar, we change the sign as we break the line. All right, and just to show you down here, here's the proof that shows Okay, if we create the circuit that matches what this says, okay, so it would be A and B, then it goes through an inver inverter to become not the whole expression A and B. Well, this one is after we've applied to Morgan's theorem, we broke the line, we changed the sign, so this one would be not A, not B, running through two inverters first, and then running through an OR gate to get us not A and not B. Well, if we look at the two truth tables, so if we were to create two truth tables down here, one for each one of these, we can see by looking at that final output column there that these are logically equivalent. So this is a legitimate move to make, and it changes the expression in no way, logically speaking. Here's the second theorem. Same thing, except for this time we have an OR. So this is a OR B with the inversion bar over the top, or the not bar. And when we break it, we change the sign to an and. And so this is just once again showing that if we write these out in their logical um, circuit equivalents here, um, that the truth table shows that both of them are logically equivalent. If you want to pause and take a little look there for a second at that, you're more than welcome to. So here's the full list of all the theorems um, that we've come across laws, theorems that we've come across in the past two units or lessons. So now let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about De Morgan's theorem and then we're going to go ahead and apply it. This is a little overkill here, but just to remind you, okay, the rule is break the line, change the sign. So if it was and, it becomes or. If it was or, it becomes and. All right, um, so don't overcomplicate the matters. Um, just if you can remember that simple rule, you got De Morgan's down. All right, we're going to apply De Morgan's theorem here and simplify F1. So remember, break the line, change the sign. So that's what we're going to be using here. All right, so we're going to start off by breaking that line there. And the expression becomes this. Oh, that's our sign we changed. I almost missed it. Good thing you guys caught that, I'm sure. Okay, so that sign changes there in the middle. And then I'm going to put the bar over the other side. So I pulled off to the side, or I put off to the side here, the theorems that we're going to mainly use in this scenario. And in this case, we broke the line, changed the sign, and we were dealing with an AND. Give me one second here. I just realized that this is written incorrectly. For some reason it got dropped when I brought it over. All right, so we're dealing with the AND scenario, which would be 20 here. So we had X and Y with the uh, not over the top. We broke the bar. We changed the sign. All right, so that was the theorem, De Morgan's theorem on line 20. All right. So our next step is to break some more lines. All right, on this one then, we're going to do some line breaking. We're gonna break this guy, and I'm gonna break this guy. 
I don't really know if it matters which one we break first, the top or the bottom. I know in the long run it doesn't really change anything as far as the sign is concerned. So I just feel better breaking the one underneath. Go about it how you will. All right. So what do we end up with if we break that line? We end up with still a big inverter over the top. Two knots there, two knots there, there. Oh, I got to go class. Sorry, I'm going to finish this guy. So that's what that one looks like. And this guy looks like this. We got inverters broke, or the bar is broke. All right. And, oh, we put parentheses there, it's still good. All right, and that was using rule 20 once again. Oh, well, 20 and 21, because one of them we had an AND gate, one, or an AND symbol, one of them we had an OR, so we're using both of those. All right, so we're just gonna write off to the side 20 and 21. All right, we got one more line to break, and then we can move on to canceling out our double negatives. So this line right here breaks, and I think that's it. And that would be, since we have an OR sign under it, that would be 21, uh, if you're looking up at the top there, if you're keeping score. So that'll now become... this. Oh, I just caught my mistake here. I forgot to change this guy to an and. Got to be careful on those. All right, so this guy, though, did not change because I didn't do anything in the last step. All right. So that was, I believe, that was 21 we used there. All right, last thing, cancel out my double negatives. I think it's the last thing, we'll see. So those two are gone, those two are gone, and those two are gone. So what does it look like now? It's X, Y, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that um, summation sign there. Not summation, um, and symbol. And then it's OR, and then Y, not Z, and not Z. And really, you don't need the parentheses there. I'm going to leave them. It's fine. And so that is 9. If you want to drop the parentheses, you can. If you like it, it's good. And that is F1. Boom. Done. All right. So you're asking yourself, where could such a horrible statement come from? Well, it comes from a very poorly designed circuit, most likely created by somebody not using a truth table. Come on, people. Okay, there's a reason we teach you to use truth tables. So they just want to show you, here's an example. Let's practice our logic analysis skills and see what kind of statement an ugly circuit like this one comes up with. I know I shouldn't say ugly, but I, I did. I'm going to stand by it. All right, so let's go with green on this one. So what do we have here? We have X and Y go into an AND gate, so we get X and Y. Uh, we have X coming down and going through the inverter here, so this is not X. We have Z coming into this OR gate here, and we have not Z coming into it also. So we end up with not X or Z. Up here at the top, we have XY going through an inverter, so we get XY with the, the not bar all the way across the top of it. And those two go into an AND gate, which makes not XY and, oop, not plus, and, now we've got to put parentheses here, not X or Z. And then that whole thing gets inverted, so that would be, giant inversion over the top or a knot. All right, and that's what this one would look like for this circuit. So guess what we're gonna do next? We're gonna call that one, by the way, that one is F2, function two. All right, so now we're gonna take that guy and see what happens when we go to try to simplify that, all right?
And I believe I wrote that reverse of what it is on the next page, so don't freak out. Basically, it's the same thing on the next page. It's just written like this. Okay, same difference. All right, so let's simplify. What is this guy going to have happen here? So let's do some breaking some lines. Uh, I'm going to break the first line right here. And... We're going to change our sign. So this is not X or Z, the whole bar across the top. And then this would be a product here, so it becomes a sum. Okay, so it went from an and to an or. And then we got XY with now a double bar across the top. So the probably the best way to deal with that double bar is to just cancel them out with each other, okay? By using theorem nine, okay? We can do that with just theorem nine here. So that becomes, oh, forgot to change my color. That becomes x, y, x and y. All right, then, so that was what, rule nine? So nine got us there. Uh, which one was this up here at the top? Uh, we went from an and to an or, so that's 20. All right. And then we're also going to go ahead and break this guy. So when we break that guy, we get that. Oh, and I forgot to change my sign once again. Been bad at that. Okay, sign change. All right. Um, and so next up, oh, wait, that was what? An or to an and. So that was 21. Sorry, I'm probably making you dizzy going back and forth like that. So we use 9 and 21 there. And now we have no more lines to break, but we do have a uh, double knot to cancel out. Okay, those guys cancel each other. So we end up with X and Z, or and not Z, or X, Y. And we use rule or theorem number nine there. All right. And B, O, C, D. Go ahead and change that. So that's a nine. All right. So that's our final bit of work there. Not too bad on that one. All right. So if for some reason you're still struggling with the Morgan's theorem here, make sure you ask your teacher and uh, good luck with your practice and activity.